Hey guys, Don Rice here, and I'm working on the Snafu Zeroli P47 from Robart. Not quite an ARF. It might be painted, but there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, I've been working on a firewall, and uh, because uh, here's the front of the P47. Um, the firewall comes uh, with holes drilled, uh, blind nuts are not installed, but the holes are drilled and the firewall fits and they kind of expect you to use a, a DA85 or a DLE85 which bolts right onto the firewall and everything's great, but uh, I didn't buy that engine. So here's a yeah, this goes on and you know if you use the preset firewall position and the motor they want you to use then you'll have about you'll have the right prop clearance and 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 but I didn't do that I bought that engine so that's a DA100 and it's a little bit longer so um, I had to make a new firewall this is uh, this is two layers of quarter inch balsa, end grain balsa. Um, in the middle there is one layer of nine ounce carbon, 90-90. Uh, this is one, out, one layer of nine ounce carbon, 90-90, with a layer of, uh, I can't remember if it's three ounce or five ounce fiberglass on top of it, uh, just to encapsulate everything. Uh, and same thing on the back side. Okay, so I made this a couple years ago. Um, a big sheet of this, uh, and I'm using that as the as a replacement for this thing, which is is also not that's not stock shape. I've cut it up for my own purposes, um, but this was the original firewall, which is only 200 thousandths thick, which I thought was a little surprising. Seemed a little light. Well, I won't say light. This is extremely hard plywood that they provide. This is uh, it might only be 200 thousandths thick, but it is nine layers. And uh, so that is some serious aircraft grade plywood right there. Very nice quality plywood. Um, <clears throat> so I'm replacing it with this. Uh, so my, my, the main firewall is going to be balsa and carbon. And, but I've got to drop the engine backwards uh, some distance in order to get my prop clearance right. So um, I've made some cutouts here. And uh, so there's, there's two layers of quarter inch um, aircraft grade plywood here and a third layer of quarter inch uh, and so the first two layers makes up a half inch um, spacer upon which this final layer um, quarter inch uh, is the actual firewall is um, is now you know like a half inch behind where it would have been you can see all the various layers in here so you know there's a half inch of um, plywood here and a half inch of balsa here and then the main firewall here so some cutouts had to happen this is where one of the carbs uh, drops in and 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 so I mean there's been a lot of a lot of work to get to this point um, if you're interested in seeing some of the steps you can go over to RC scale builder and check it out um, so this sits in here like this. We've got some wiggle room left and right, fore and aft. So, uh, you know, we're doing okay. I'm going to still have to make some more uh, room here. I'm going to put a degree or a degree and a, a quarter of down and a, a degree of right. Um, some people say, oh, it just goes zero, zero. Yeah, you know what? You can. Uh, most planes that are zero, zero. You can see it immediately on takeoff that the plane needs some right thrust or it needs a lot of right rudder. Um, most guys don't figure it out and they just fly their planes around crooked. I see it all the time. People don't trim their rudders. It's okay if you go zero zero. Just please God put some right rudder trim in that airplane. Um, anyway, uh, using proper thrusts on a model makes them fly better. Don't listen to anybody that tells you otherwise. They're wrong. They just simply fly better if you get the thrust right. So, there you go. I'm going to have to put a, a hole here for the exhaust can. 
but I don't have the exhaust yet. Uh, so there you go. Oh, and the reason for this, um, hang on. So on the back side of the firewall assembly will go this thing. And so um, this is going to mount up and um, actually looking at it, I might have to make it a little smaller. We'll have to see. Anyway, that's going to go on there somehow. And, and the reason I saved this piece was because of uh, these cutouts, these, these indentations here. They align up, um, I would normally say they align up very nicely um, with this, this, these four pieces that make up a, a battery box, um, ignition box. Um, but what I will say is they align up really quite, uh, the, the alignment is just pure shit is what it is. And so um, these slots uh, are just so badly undersized, uh, there's no way to get um, these tongues to fit into these slots. So I dremeled out the, the holes and then I ended up, um, you know, what you see here, those, these slots here, I mean, I ended up putting these on the, on the, the bench, bench sander. So, so you can see the different layers right there. So I ended up sanding off about one layer of, uh, all of those tongues fairly quickly on the bench sander to get them to slip into the holes that are just too damn small. And, uh, and I haven't glued it all together yet because I think I'm, I'm going to wait until I know where I'm going to put my throttle servos. It'll be a whole lot easier to cut a hole for a throttle servo, um, for instance, on this side, which has no holes. Um, it'll be a whole lot easier to cut a throttle servo if this isn't all glued together yet. So I'm going to wait. Wait a little while for that. Um, also, uh, once I mount the engine, um, there will be four large blind nuts there. I will then countersink, you know, I'll do my normal, um, you know, with a Forstner bit, uh, drill, drill a sink in the back of this piece of plywood that will align over the top of those uh, four blind nuts and it will encapsulate those four blind nuts so that they never ever see the light of day again Later